One second, Mom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, you're Hi, friend. I'm Dylan. Oh, my God. Hi, I'm Neil, and this is Youth on Subjects of the World, Season 3, Episode 1. So the f- p- p- perfect way to start off our season, Dylan talking to his mommy, so you can tell that we're small right. children on our computers. <laughs> but, yes, yes. So, well, I think we're all excited to get back after a long Especially break. for this topic, because as some of you may know, probably not, I don't know. But the thing is, this is actually a very important episode, because the first episode of this um podcast ever season one episode one was uh the 2016 presidential election now we sit here in 2019 and the one of the big things on the table is should donald trump be impeached which is the title of this episode and the topic of this episode should donald trump be impeached we're going to go out there provocative we're ready to go and talk about this and very important topic um yeah so I guess we'll, we'll start off with, let's try to keep this uh, simple to begin. All right. So should Donald Trump be impeached? Let's go. And then we'll go with the reasons after. Dylan, do you think President Donald J. Trump should be impeached? Do I think President Trump should be impeached? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yes, no, I don't know. But I would prefer a yes or no. Honest, uh, all right. I thought about something earlier, which I thought was interesting. I read something, and it was like Bill Clinton had some girl um, – give him a blow job. Our president commits men, it bre- breaks many major laws. And they're just like, what you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, that's not really an answer, but I don't know. I would say probably yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be fuck you boy. Cause I'm going to say yes too. Well, this means we still can't talk about it and have interest. So I'm going to say yes firmly. And why is that? So we'll go with why now. So I'll say, I'll say why for you kind of said a little bit of why, but I'll say why. And then you can say why. So, um, so why should Donald Trump be impeached in my opinion? Okay. So impeaching is, um, it's a, so just for those of you who don't know what impeaching is, like, I think most people think what impeaching is, is Congress just kicks the president out of office. That's not what impeaching is. Um, the impeachment process, let me just explain it step by step. Excuse me. Step one, the speaker of the house, which in our case would be Nancy Pelosi, would bring to the floor, um, a motion to impeach. Uh, the president. Impeachment is done on any federal official. Uh, they can impeach anyone. Same thing works without work on a state level of like the state assembly impeaching someone. But so the this House of the House of Representatives would impeach um, would would vote to impeach Donald Trump by simple majority, and this would pass easily as the Democrats have a majority. It's like one strand of hair is pissing me off. It's just standing up there. Okay, but, um, but since since uh, so the Democrats have a majority, so right now the numbers are the Democrats have 235, I think, representatives in the House, and the Republicans have 193. Um, and there are two vacancies. So, um, <clears throat> so that's I think those are the numbers right now for the House. Um, so uh, it would it would basically clearly pass. Not to mention. There would probably be some Republicans that would vote in favor of the of of impeaching Trump in the House. So it'd probably even pass by a larger majority, but it's it's irrelevant because you only need 218 votes for a majority in the House. But so so basically, the House would pass um, the mo- the motion to impeach Trump. This would trigger a trial in the Senate. Now, this is as far as any impeachment has ever gone. There have been two impeachments or. I think two impeachments in presidential history. The first one uh, was a really long time ago. Some president that I don't remember, he was impeached because he like fired a federal official or something for like something stupid or he hired, it was something, I don't know. But he was impeached um, and then and then he was acquitted in the Senate. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then Bill Clinton was impeached by the House and acquitted in the Senate. And what... What this, uh, so no president, and contrary to popular belief, Nixon was not impeached. I don't know if it's popular belief or not, but Nixon was not impeached. He was just, he was, he, the impeachment bill, the um, bill, the impeachment like proceeding was going to start and the House was going to vote for it, but he knew the second the House voted for it in the winter Senate, he would have been removed. So he just, he just resigned. Um, but so the, the, <clears throat> the impeachment, uh, so, but no 
sitting president has actually ever been removed from office. And what I mean by that is impeachment doesn't remove you, as I said earlier. It, it just puts you to trial in the Senate. So what would happen to Trump is he would go to the Senate and the chief justice of the Supreme Court would preside over the hearing. And this is basically, it's like um, impeachment, while it's, it doesn't, I mean, the Democrats aren't really gunning for removing Trump from office through the impeachment trial. They're basically just gunning for, um, they're basically just gunning for like a, uh, basically just a try to get everything out in the open. And then after that, because the Republicans hold a 53 to 47 majority in the Senate, and it's very possible that he would be acquitted in the Senate, which means the Republicans wouldn't remove him. So, but but the thing is, impeaching the end goal of a contrary popular belief, the end goal of impeachment really isn't to remove him; it's just to get everything out in the open. Okay, so why? Okay, we understand what impeachment is. Why should he be impeached? Because we both, Jim and I, both believe he should be impeached. Why do I think he should be impeached? We'll start off with that. I believe he should be impeached because. Um, I think there's, I think with the whole uh, Mueller investigation and the amount of corruption around the, the, uh, the Trump, um, <clears throat> the Trump administration, such as um, Attorney General Barr refusing subpoenas uh, from the House, um, being held in the, uh, the Attorney General of the United States is currently in contempt of the House of Representatives for not appearing. Um, and basically, Attorney General Barr acting like Trump's personal lawyer censoring details that were very clearly relevant in the Mueller report for the public so they couldn't see it. The, yeah, it's just um, absolutely ridiculous. Trump, um, and if you want to talk about lying, like Bill Clinton was originally impeached because he lied on like, he, he lied under oath or something. But, um, but Trump has, and even if he hasn't lied under oath, honestly, lying to the American people so much is is just an absolute like shit show. Like if you look at some of the stuff, if you look at the <clears throat> the things that Trump says, such as like I was acquitted. He kept saying I was acquitted. I was acquitted. I was acquitted. He was never acquitted by um, and even and uh, even uh, Moore said he was never acquitted. Uh, going against just recently going against congressional approval, Congre congressional con the Congress bipartisan support for a bill saying don't sell shit to Saudi Arabia, Trump. Don't sell stuff to Saudi Arabia. Okay. And what did Trump do? He sold stuff to Saudi Arabia, signed this weapon. It's like, and it, it's just, that's an impeachable offense in itself. Not to mention, the House of Representatives impeached three separate, uh, sorry, impeached, subpoenaed three separate organizations. They subpoenaed, a, they subpoenaed the New York State Tax Department. They subpoenaed Donald Trump himself. And they subpoenaed a casino where Donald Trump, I think, was, I don't remember that specifically, but they subpoenaed some casino. He was, he was basically involved with like a scandal there that allowed him to like have tax, uh, money tax free. Uh, the casino, the New York State Tax Department, tax department just gave it straight up. Um, Donald Trump said no. Uh, the House said, "Well, we're not asking you. We're asking. We're just we're subpoenaing the IRS." And the IRS, the final person to say yes or no in the IRS is the um, <clears throat> the Secretary of the Treasury. The Secretary of the Treasury, who, as you should know, is appointed by Trump, said, "Yeah, no, you're not getting his tax returns." And they're and they're like, "Okay, well, what the hell? It's very justifiable." And if you're wondering. Well, why does he say that or can he do that? Well, he can't do that. The House should be able to subpoena and check and balance the government and investigate the president. So it, it's going through all these courts. And I think they have, but all the court, all the court stuff with the casino and Trump himself have all been resolved. And they've all been in favor of the House of Representatives because they're doing their damn duty. They're, um, they're doing all this and they, and yeah, but I mean, they found out with the New York state tax records that they already got is public. I think Trump stole like over like a million dollars the tax just did that, and that was like in the nineteen, the nineteen, like nineteen ninety-five or something. But yeah, and also the last reason he should be impeached is because I said earlier it's the House of Representatives' damn duty to do so. Like it's their job checking down with the government. And yeah, this is clearly an impeachable offense. Okay, so that's that's my huge long thing about why he should impeach. What do you think, Dylan? What do I think? Well, I don't know. I mean, you went on for like <laughs> you went on for a while, so. I think you pretty much covered all the bases that I was thinking of. Um, I don't know. It just seems like I don't even know. Like, what do you want in a president? Is someone that the American that's like one likable? Um, Speaking of likable, while you're talking, I'm gonna go up and look at his polling numbers right now. Okay. 
Yeah, like something that's likable, relatively trustworthy, um, diplomatic, and he just seems to have none of, the, none of those qualities. Um, I know we were like talking earlier, you were saying earlier too that the goal of it is not necessarily to get them out of office. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I, I'm going by what the general thought of public is, is that. Um, because that is part of it, right? What is part of it? Sorry, I'm looking at a poll. What? Like getting, getting kicked out of the, getting kicked out of office. That's part of an impeachment. Uh, yeah. So the house, so in the simplest terms, the house votes to hold. So it's based the house voting for it. The impe- impeaching a president is basically like, um, what's it called? It's like a, what's the word? It's like a indictment criminal indictment, right? That's when you, you have to go to trial, right? Is that what an indictment is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the impeachment is like an indictment, a criminal indictment, where you have to come to court now. So Trump has been dodging all this shit, like his, him and his administration, Barr refusing to go in front of the House, Trump refusing to give his tax returns, all this basically bullshit. And he's, and honestly, this isn't really a partisan thing, okay? Like, I, like I was no fan of Hillary Clinton. Dylan was no fan of Hillary Clinton. This is just a principle thing. Like, I'm not clear about saying we should impeach Trump because he is a Republican. No, I don't give a shit. Also, Trump isn't really even a Republican, to be honest. He's what people would call a rogue candidate, which is, so as you know, it's impossible to win the presidency unless you're under the Democrat or Republican ticket. So rogue candidates, people, Bernie Sanders is a good example of a rogue candidate. Rogue candidates are basically independents. I mean, Trump was a Democrat and he was a Republican, but he's a He's a freaking rogue candidate. If you look at his stuff, he's not saying stuff that's in line with the Republican Party. He's more authoritarian than Republican. Mm-hmm. But so what a rogue candidate is, is basically they hold values that are different from the party, but they have to run a party primary and they have to choose one because you can't win unless you do that. And the problem with Trump, the problem with a rogue candidate winning is that by definition of the party, the president is the head of the party. So because Donald Trump's the president of the, the, pre, the head of the party, he's destroyed, he's like destroyed the Republican Party. The Republican Party split up into factions. Mm-hmm. So it's all this, it's this mass, the Republican Party is, the Republican Party is this massive mess. Um, but yeah, so what was the question? I don't know. Should he, should he, like, was, uh, like, getting kicked out of office, is that part of it? I mean, it is. Hello, uh, Nancy Pelosi, who's kind of heading all this, would like to see Trump impeached, um, sorry, not impeached, removed, but it's real, but if we want to be realistic about it, which her, she said, she said, what I want to see happen is Donald Trump go to jail for all the things he's done, mainly the tax stuff, and if impeachment is part of that, then that's fine. She wants to see, yeah. two, um, she wants Wait, to see, honestly, he's not elected. It's so confusing sometimes. Like, why even the Republicans like him? Like, who the fuck likes him? No, no one fucking time? likes him. No, it's it's a mystery. No one fucking likes him. The only reason he won is because... I did not know that is true. First of all, he lost the popular vote. He lost by 3 million votes. That's the, I think that's like the biggest margin anyone's ever lost a popular vote by, which is insane. Mm-hmm. He lost by 3 million votes. And first of all, the only reason he won the Electoral College, and he still lost popular vote the only, by a lot, the only reason he won the Electoral College is because... Um, is because like it was they because the Democrats ran Hillary Clinton, someone that no one liked. Mm-hmm. He won. I would say I say this a lot. Donald Trump didn't win. Hillary Clinton lost. Yeah, that's more what happened. You would have. I, I know it's such a. But also he won. But also, well, who? by definition, that's not true. I know by. I know like by numbers it is, but by definition it is not. Well, by definition, what's not true? That he lost. Right. I know it's just metaphoric for saying it, but... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But it's basically... It was more... I know I know what you mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know. Like, it just seems like he's done so much crazy shit that no one else would have gotten away with, and somehow he's getting away with it. Like the second he was fucking elected, he, like, the president of Taiwan called, and he, like, acknowledged Taiwan's existence, which is a fucking big no-no. So those of you who don't know, like, I'm going way back because, like, so much shit has been going on for so long. But so the reason you can't talk to the president of Taiwan is because China, because of a huge civil war they're not going to get into. All right, here's the version of it. 
the Republic of China, the Republic of China existed, and then there was a communist overthrow um, by the PLA, which was this military, which was like this like um rebe this rebellion, PLA, People's Liberation Army. They overthrew the government. The government fled to Taiwan, and the People's Republic of China took over a communist part, a communist uh, country, and they took over. Now, so the old Chinese government fled to Taiwan, and the old Chinese government, the old Chinese government, and their their old Chinese government, sorry, the new Chinese government, the People's Republic of China, says, "Hey, we own uh, Taiwan," and then Taiwan's like, "No, you fucking don't. We own ourselves." Um, and they're like, the "Taiwan," and then China's like, "No, we own you." And because China's this massive thing in global trade, they force everyone to call, like all countries, to call Taiwan Chinese Taipei in official like meetings. But everyone secretly acknowledges Taiwan. The point is that you don't acknowledge Taiwan exists as a country openly. Mm. Trump did exactly fucking that, causing almost a, a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> not to mention his tariffs on China, which are um, which are uh, which caught which borderline caused a trade war. But that's just recently, which will cost mm -hmm. households of four an extra like one thousand dollars to seven hundred dollars every year. Mm -hmm. Which is stupid, um, and also, can we? Uh, we're, not, we're not even going to talk about the fucking wall. It sounds oh, no, like that's that's a whole other. It sounds like a fucking three year old, and I know this sounds like I'm just like a political hack or whatever sometimes. But I mean, the thing is, the truth isn't fair. Sometimes, like the truth isn't fair. A lot of the time, but like, I know it's it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I'm not, not going to lie. What I'm saying is very. Not biased, but I'm saying is very um, one-sided. But that's because the truth isn't is one-sided sometimes. Like the truth isn't always bipartisan. Mm -hmm. The truth is objective. It's not bipartisan. Yeah. Facts don't care about your feelings, if you will. <laughs> the whole material thing. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I I definitely, I mean, I would, I mean, for me personally, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to register if I am in a state with a closed primary, which means I can only vote in the primary if I'm, if I'm a part, member of the party, then I'd probably register Democrat just because I, I care more about the Democratic primary than the Republican par primary. But if I live in a state with an open primary, I would just register independent. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean. But no, I don't, I don't really know like 100% in anything, but. He probably should get kicked out. I, I really have not researched much on this topic. Yeah, I've done I run a fair amount. I feel like you've done more extensive research on yeah, this. Yeah, I've definitely I used to actually be pretty I do like okay, I'll I, I do like one thing Trump has done. All right, I'll tell you what it is. And it wasn't really anything he did, it's like the consequence of him. One thing Trump did, it was a big fuck you to the establishment. And I was like, thank God. Because the Democrats with suppressing Bernie Sanders voters, borderline vote voter suppression to prevent Bernie Sanders from winning the primary. Um, mm. And I loved how Donald Trump like beat all the established Republican candidates. He beat Jeb Bush. He beat, he beat Ted Cruz, the devil incarnate. He like he did all this stuff. And what did he do against Hillary Clinton, the establishment Democrat, but higher priorities? He won 300 electoral college votes. You need 270 to win, folks. Yeah. I like that. I liked. I liked the establishment going, oh, and just being totally freaked out. That was amazing. I mean, it's almost like it's almost nice that he got elected because it taught the American people that it's kind of stupid to do this kind of shit. It also it also uh, showed me that the democratic process. I mean, he lost popular vote. The electoral college as a democratic process actually works. Like I thought. Like I thought. Oh, there's gonna be some like internal government conspiracy like because the way the electoral college works is that technically states indirectly you in your vote is indirect and like it can be changed and that's in the simplest terms but no democracy actually prevailed mm -hmm. well democracy he lost the popular vote the electoral college's version of democracy prevailed mm -hmm. so what was i saying the oh we could talk about bernie sanders now that got me pissed off what? What he was saying about wanting to pay everybody's college loans off. I thought yeah. that was kind of fun. Why don't we do? We should do an episode on. We should do an episode on the twenty twenty uh, Democratic presidential primary candidates. Yes, we should. 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 We should.
We're not going to do all of them. Like Bill de Blasio. Let's actually say that because I'd love that for one episode. Mm. But good idea. But I have Trump's polls here. So this is 538.com, which is a pretty, it's a pretty um, trustworthy website. The only time it wasn't trustworthy was actually during the 2016 election, I think, when it got things a little fucked up. But it's pretty good. It was pretty. It was. It was fairly accurate during the midterms. Mm. Um, so right now, Trump has an approval rating of 42.5%, mm. which is honestly not that bad as of today. Yeah. Like his, like, it's kind of his lowest approval rating of all time. Well, not of all time, since like, like this, like this general few months. Mm. Um, I, get what you mean. I get what you mean. One of the worst ones is a flat, flat so 36.7% in like December 12th. Oh, you know, you know why 2017? You know why? Because yeah, that, was that was the neutrality. That was the that was the that was right before neutrality was removed. I bet. Oh really? Yeah, that was right when it was happening. Mm. And the twelfth was two days before it got removed. I'm honestly kind of surprised that, like, I'm really not that into the whole current, um, with the current stuff with polit- like current political stuff, uh, for the most part. But, um, what was I saying? Like, oh God, I completely forget. Well, what were you talking about? No, I was just talking about the poll numbers now. What were you saying? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, that, Like, everybody seems to freaking forget that he had the longest government shutdown ever. Okay. I, have I thought for sure that. that was going to be the end of his reign, was when yeah. people stopped getting paid. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the... <laughs> Yeah, that's when Americans you Americans have... do not give a shit unless they're getting paid. <laughs> All these okay, what percentage of the what percentage of America works in the public sector? I was talking about what right. What? No, but even still was affected. Affected by government. I don't even mean I just mean like as soon as any company is just like, oh, we're going to stop paying our workers. Who the fuck is going to go? Who the fuck's going to like them? Okay, I don't have a, I don't have a percentage. Let me look at what percentage, what, I'll look at public sector. Okay. No, but that's too wide because a lot of city workers. You know, is there anything else you want the net after this? Anything else you want to talk about about Donald Trump? I don't know. I mean, we can just um. Whatever you were pissed off at him about. This seems like something that you're very interested in. Yes, it is. But so the government took. I couldn't find any specific numbers on the. I mean, I could look more and find them, but I don't really. It was a lot of. I mean, it was a lot of people, and the problem is, it. I think the economy must have taken a hit, right? Sure less, people, yeah, less people making money is always a bad thing. But um, so the government shut down. That was bullshit. Um, one of the horrible things that Especially happened. Too, if you think about it, what you said, what one percent is employed by them? No, no, I said I don't know what, how many, what, what, oh. what percent? One percent. It's probably like twenty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like of but imagine like twenty percent of America. Or even 1%. Imagine if 1% of the population is getting paid by somebody and they're stuck getting paid. Well, here's the bad thing. So so public sector workers, they do actually get all their catch-up pay when the government shutdown ends. Yeah, I do know that. But, but, here's the thing. Government contractors don't get shit. Mm. So, for example, if I'm a company, I'm like Neil's, I'm Neil's Construction, and the government hires me, hey, build the, uh, repair this interstate highway. I'm like, okay. So I go to the RPR, okay, where's my money? Oh, I'm sorry, the government shut down, we can't give you any money. I'm like, what? The government shut down, you can't give me any money? Yeah, we can't do that. Okay. All right, so I wait for the government shut down to end. Government shut down ends. Oh, can I have my money now? No. What the fuck? So, mm-hmm. so the government shutdown is a horrible thing because you're literally stealing from people legally. Like, I'm going to sue you. 
Really? You're going to sue the federal government? Go fuck yourself, by the way. Thank you for the road. Have a, thank you for the road. Uh, I really appreciate it. Go fuck yourself. Um, I'm not giving you shit. Have a nice day. <laughs> like, it's such, like, it's such a horrible thing. Mm, definitely. <clears throat> and I, I have a story about the government. It shit. is coming. What? I have a story about the government shit on. Dylan knows this story. I was, I was, I was going, I was going to India and during the government shutdown. And so we went to the airport and it had already been a pretty stressful trip. We were waiting in line at, at security and a TSA person was sitting there, headphones in, I swear to God, like he had like a servant, a dog, a service dog, a dog, like a sniffing dog, whatever. He had earphones in, he was on his phone like this, earphones in, he's like, the dog looked at my mom's bag, sniffed it and sat down and the guy just did this, just keep going. It's like, yeah, I don't know whether to be happy or incredibly terrified, but, but he did not give a, sh- I did not, okay, I did not have to take my shoes off. I, I am 16 years old and I am brown. I have to take my shoes off at TSA security, okay? No matter what. They just said, go through. I just went through the metal detector. I'm pretty sure I have like metal in my pocket. I, I, have, to, I have change in my pocket and I swear to God it beeped. That scared me. I had change in my pocket and I swear to God it beeped. Mm-hmm. It just did not care. Like they were so apathetic. They did, they did not care. And then while I know, I know yeah. when I was really really little, I thought that the government shut down. My mom told me that there might be a government shutdown, and I thought that that meant like the world was going to end. <laughs> the government was shutting down. The whole world shutting down. We're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But then you realize the government does nothing for humanity. But then I basically realized that it's just a minor inconvenience. <laughs> yeah, except for the people, you know, it pushes the world. Right. <laughs> but the Not amount for of, other people, but yeah, well, the amount of people that got pushed below the poverty line is pretty screwed up. What happened? A bunch of people got pushed below the poverty line. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to talk about those uh, concentration camps or whatever people oh, are calling? Yeah, let's talk about that. I need to. So I just want to. I don't want to just make claims without having evidence. So I'm going to yeah. go. Yes, go. Because, because but um, without the evidence, so the first thing is like there have been so it's always been a big thing. Like the southern border has always been a huge topic of discussion. Like yeah. with, like with, like I'll I'll say a good example of, of good border security and then a bad example. Here's a good example: um, a bunch of people. They were mostly women and children. They weren't really. They weren't bad people. They were just trying to get over the border, trying to get to a better place. The government. You know, they, they were literally just storming the border, just trying to run across. Mm-hmm. The government deployed tear gas right at the border. They couldn't get across. And people were like, that's unethical. I understand. It's fucking horrible. But what do you want us to do? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, everyone, honestly, everyone, Democrats and Republicans were like, okay, that was the right call. Yeah, they didn't spray them. They just... I know. Like, it's not like they wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. What are they going to do? Let them through? Or shoot them? Fuck that. No. These are non-lethal methods to get them away from the border. Yeah. It's interesting, too. Like, I really do not know what to think about immigration. Uh, like, on one hand, I feel like it should be open borders. Because, uh, like, it, it, makes it, it makes it easier for people to come in and come out and leave. We mean, okay, well, you're, wait, clarify open borders because most people think that means like literally doors are open. Is that what you mean? Like doors no, are open? No, I don't mean like there's yeah, no border there's, security. You gotta clarify that because people mm-hmm. think open borders. Because like, obviously there should be some amount of border security. Right. Uh, I just think it's such a like a freaking touchy subject. It really wasn't before. What? Before Trump, it really wasn't. Did you know that? I mean, all right, touchy is the wrong word. <laughs> no, it is. It is a touchy subject. It's an incredibly. Uh, type of subject. It wasn't before Trump, though. It's in, it's it's really weird. Maybe Reagan, it's interesting that Trump's kind of sparked this debate on immigration. Reagan and Bush had like the same policies as Obama and Clinton. Really? And what were theirs? All the Reagan freaking Reagan said said um he said we should make it the the best way to combat illegal immigration is to make it easier for people to come into this country legally. So we can tax their income. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, what the fuck? 
like it's the easiest way. I know it's like people are like we don't. I know I understand the principal thing. We're like yeah, you feel it's easier for people to come into the country. Just a problem with immigration. That's horrible. That's not principled at all. Yeah, but it's but it's a practical solution. Like you, you can't stop illegal immigration. Building a wall is beyond stupid. A lot of people, good forty to thirty percent of people that um, illegal immigrants, they actually fly and then they overstay their visas, or they just cross the border with a valid visa and overstay. Yeah, it's very easy. And on the other side of the argument, there's the the people that are too progressive thinking that we should literally, like there was one guy who said, ICE, you know ISIS, right? That he what? ICE, you know ISIS? ICE, not ISIS. ICE is. ICE. Yeah. yeah. ICE. The, he call, so ICE basically, one of their jobs is to go and basically knock on doors and be like, hey, you're an illegal immigrant. Can we get the fuck out? And they basically, I mean, so the guy said that ICE is the American version of the Gestapo. I was like, really, man? Like, we can't, we have to, they have a purpose. Like, so, I mean, there are other sides of the argument that are pretty stupid, but for mm-hmm. the most part, illegal immigration was a pretty, or immigration was a pretty bipartisan topic. I'm sure it's scary, too, because, like, a lot of these places, people are fleeing from them for, like, a good freaking reason. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame them. I never blame an illegal immigrant. It's just that we have to have, we have to have borders for a certain reason. It's it's a victimless situation, I'll say. It is a victimless and and I guess purposeless. I don't know what perpetratorless situation. It's a victimless and perpetratorless situation. There's no good guy. There's no bad guy. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Just- and I know I know too. I listened to a uh, a docu- like a, not a, a podcast about this where they were talking about like border security before yeah. Trump and how they were basically like it was pretty. It's pretty freaking secure. Like. What else do you want us to do? Like, how do you have this quote unquote extreme vetting that he talks about? He's like, we already vetted everyone like a fair amount. Yeah, I don't know if it's extreme. Okay, so this is extreme vetting thing. It's kind of stupid. It's like, um, okay, so the, what the extreme vetting is, is it, it's, it's supposed to be, um, it's supposed to be like, okay, so it's for citizenship, I believe. It's not for immigration, I think, mm-hmm. or just coming into the country. It's it's citizenship. It, it's yeah. actually, like, they're like this daily show. I'm not saying the daily show is like the pinnacle of knowledge or, or the pinnacle of good research, but they basically read, they basically read the, um, uh, <clears throat> They, they, they read like the questions from the Trump citizenship test. And I actually agree with some of the questions. They make sense. Like I'm not against extreme vetting. Like the mm-hmm. question. Yeah, people have to be vetted. Yeah, the questions were like, were like, is gay marriage okay? Gay, no, it's a gay marriage is and the answer was legal. Like they want, they want, I guess what they want, the whole point of it is, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to share, like, I'm not going to share, like the, the diplomatic answer would be, to make sure other cultures, the point of it was to make sure that radical Muslims understand that um, gay, being gay is okay, um, females can be presidents, like all that, all that crap. That was the point of it. All that made up shit. Yeah, that bullshit. Um, <laughs> Trump is a freaking feminist, feminazi, and he needs to be impeached because <clears throat> he's a soy boy cuck. Anyway. Damn straight. Damn straight. But, but so, but yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not saying that people specifically need these tests for Muslims. I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. Like, like someone's going to say, being a Muslim means you die. And then it's like, oh, someone's going to fill that out on the citizenship test. Someone's going to fill that out on the citizenship test. Really? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> even if they don't believe that, they're just going to fucking lie. Like, it's so stupid. But whatever. Who cares? I'm fine with it. <clears throat> It doesn't matter. Mm. So, yeah. but yeah, but the, the thing is, is that the Trump supporters failed the tests. Really? It was like gay marriage is disgusting, gross. So the correct answer was legal. <laughs> and it's like, and then he asked this one guy, he said, he said, all right, so um, uh, I'm asking you a question. Uh, females are perfectly qualified to be presidents. Uh, true or false? False. 
when I think of a president, I think of a man. The president is a man's job. A, a woman would, would start a war in a heartbeat if she gets a hot flash or something. This is a woman saying this, by the way. A woman <laughs> saying that a female would start a war if she had a hot flash. What the fuck? And then the guy says, okay, all right. Well, haven't all wars been started by men? <laughs> and, then, mm-hmm. like, um, and, and then he goes, yeah, I'm sorry. That answer wasn't correct. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I know. I love that clip. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, was there, oh, I want to talk about the, the concentration camps. Oh, yes. Yes, we did want to talk about that. So I thought it was very interesting. I I only have seen some like headlines from it, but have not looked too much into it. But it just seems like pretty insane what's going on, honestly. And like somebody questioned Mike Pence on it. It was like, aren't you uh, like a a man of faith and a father? Like, how could you even think of like doing this? Like, this is okay. Like, I don't give a shit or something like that. (laughs) He's like, he just didn't care. And then I read something too. Like, how the he's like. You on? He was like, "Ha ha! How funny! You honestly think Mike Pence has any amount of uh, humanity left in him?" Oh my god! And yeah. Just like crazy, or like they were giving children aluminum bags, just it's like aluminum blankets, or yeah. like those are like the ones that give in ambulances, like for um, they're for like they're for like heat retention in like very specific circumstances. Mm. Like, they're just, like super, they just really need. I mean, they're based for refugees, and they're not. I mean, it's so so. So the problem with that is, and I, I'm looking. I'll look it up in a sec. I'll keep looking. I'm looking at it right now. But I'll look it up in a sec because I just want to say, mass deportation never works. Mm. Like always resolves in a massive humanitarian crisis. And I would so, also like to add how how absolutely insane our immigration courts are. Okay, our immigration courts are fucking. Re- like they, so they unbelievable. They, they're backed up to shit. They, your your trial is like it's basically. I mean, it's it's an absolute shit show. You're yeah. you have it's unconstitutional. You have no get. First of all, what is it? A fair and speedy trial? Okay, bullshit. Speedy. Those those courts like they have backup list of like years and shit. Mm-hmm. And Same fair. With like what is it? There's what is it too? There's something like five thousand. Just straight up American citizens, people born in America, get deported every year because of how crazy our uh, immigration courts are. Yeah, yeah, like some Americans get deported. It's really yeah. Like there's this one immig- like lady who was an expert on immigration. She was giving us example of this one guy who had mental health. This is like a real story. Somebody had mental health like issues, um, and he got arrested for like sleeping in a park or something. Not arrested, but just taken to the police station. And he gets there, and then they're like, raise your hand if you are an illegal, if you're not an American citizen or whatever. And he didn't know what was going on because everyone else was, so he just raised his hand. <laughs> and then he gets deported to Mexico. <laughs> but he's not a Mexican citizen, so he gets deported to, like, Ecuador and then a bunch of other places. And finally, somebody finds him on the street. and like, what are you doing here? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad and depressed, like, so it's such a, what's the word? It's such a defeatist answer i just don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like that's kind of crazy honestly so it just seems like our immigration courts are just so incredibly messed up well they definitely are mm-hmm. have you found anything yet neil um let me oh shit i screwed up one second Uh, uh, AOC called them concentration camps, I know. And she actually got shit for that. You know that? Yeah, I did hear that. It did seem a little bit, though, like as soon as one person was like, okay, it's okay to call it that, everybody else was calling it that. Yeah. That's what I thought a little bit. It is kind of funny. It's like, I don't know. They're like, it just doesn't, they do seem lit. It seems pretty freaking crazy to just be locked up in cages. All right, I'm going to read a little excerpt from the New York Times. Um, 
Thousands of, uh, of migrant children have now been separated from their parents. As NBC News reported in May, at least seven children are known to have died in immigration custody since last year. Almost a decade and mm-hmm. no child reportedly died while in the custody of U- U.S. Customs and Borders Protection. Homeland Security's own Inspector General has described egregious conditions at detention facilities. And last week, on a week for the Trump Organization administration argued before um, an in an in an incredulous panel. Sorry, an incredulous panel. Oh, I can't even read. What an idiot. An incredulous panel of judges in the Ninth Circuit. I heard about this. This is crazy. Listen to this. An incredulous panel of judges on the Ninth on the Ninth Circuit that toothbrushes and soap, toothbrushes, soap, and appropriate sleeping arrangements were not necessary for the government to meet its to meet and keep its requirements. Migrants to to for the government to meet its requirements to keep migrant children in safe and safe and sanitary conditions. Okay, so this was fucking insane. So a person of the Trump, so the Ninth Circuit Court. Where did where did that come from? Too, I've heard that from a lot of places, but I'm not. This is like the New York things. Times. What the New York this Times? This is the New York Times. Oh wow. Yeah. So the so so, uh, so an aficionado of the Trump administration went in front of the Ninth Circuit Court, and the Ninth Circuit Court questioned, okay, um, what's going on? <clears throat> what's going on with? Um, why are the why are the migrants not being given toothbrushes, toothpaste, and soap? And they said, oh, they weren't there. Well, they're only there for two to three days, so we didn't think that was necessary. Okay, first of all, what the fuck? Two to three days? Would any American go two two to three days without soap, and water, soap, or toothbrush, or toothpaste? Would any prisoner go two to three days without soap, toothbrush, or tooth, toothpaste? No. Um, and also. Because the system's so fucking backed up, they're often there longer. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah, that's crazy. I, know. I can't even. I I like sometimes like putting myself in other people's shoes. I couldn't even imagine that. Yeah, imagine. Like, imagine. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It's like imagine where you're coming from. Where it's probably it's like you're running away because you're afraid of dying or getting killed from something. Either it be gangs or disease or your own government. Yeah. So you're just trying to escape. To get away from all this evil shit, and you finally get to this one place where you're like, "Oh, finally, I freaking find salvation where it's some amount of safety, and I'm in a first world country." And then you get locked up in like a prison, <laughs> separated from kids. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's kind of like a concentration camp. Yeah, it's just nuts. It's absolutely like insane, incredulous. Is yeah. The word, right? it's, I don't think you use that word correctly. I don't think so either. I think that I think it means like, um, like shocked. Really? Yeah. No. Well, you wouldn't say I'm incredulous. Well, I think it's usually like, like an incredulous. Okay. Okay. This is so. Off top. I'm gonna look it up now. This is so off topic. Mm, I I didn't think I used it right either. Yeah. But it just uh, it seems like such a crazy thing to put yourself into, or just like what's going on with them. And I even read to somebody like okay, it says uh, a person who is unwilling or unable to believe something. I mean, it's basically it's basic. I mean, yeah, incredulous could be someone who's stubborn, but it also could mean like shocked. I mean, I, it's unbelievable. Like, mm. so I, I just think it's like I read something too. It was a quote from some immigrant where he was like, "I've been shot at by gangs, and having my child taken away from me—that's torture." Yeah, that's fucked. Separating. Like All right, this one is talking about the aluminum blanket. Do you want me to keep reading? This is still New York Times. Sure. All right. As one of the judges asked the attorney, "Are you arguing seriously that you do not read the argument as requiring you do something other than what I described? Cold all night long, lights all night long, sleep on the concrete floor, and you get an aluminum blanket." Mm. Stop, think about that. Not only it's, not even like, it's not even like these people are prisoners by any means. Yeah, they're... they're <sighs> like, they didn't do anything illegal, did they? They're just trying to come across the border. I guess so, yeah. I guess maybe it's legal, I don't know. But by law, they're dead. not... They're not... They didn't break any laws. Yeah. First of all, prisoners are not treated like this. What? It's the first of all, prisoners are not treated like this. Yeah. Prisoners are treated better than that. All right. Stop and think about that. 
Not only do these children uh, question uh, in question not have beds, but they're not even turning off the light so that they can go to sleep. Sleep deprivation is a form of torture, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. I also read that. All right, so I'll read this one last thing, then we can move on. According to the report, a two-year-old boy locked in detention wants to be held all the time. A few girls, ages 12, 10, sorry, 10 to 15, 10 to 15. Imagine you or I being in there. 10 to 15. Yeah, crazy. Say that, say they've been doing their best to feed and soothe the clingy toddler who has handed, who has, who was handed to them by a guard days ago. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. That's just absolutely nuts. Okay. That is a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Then you have these fucking like stick up your ass. Old that's, that's my whole problem with people who like, just, I mean, this is not me saying I believe in a flat earth, but people who just give a shit about this. There's so much more important shit going on than who the fuck cares if there's a flat earth. <laughs> so meaningless. <laughs> like this is the important shit going on. No one cares if the <laughs> earth is flat. It won't change. If somebody walked up to me, told me for 100% the earth is flat, I'd be like, okay, I don't care. It doesn't <laughs> change my life. Well, uh, is it important that Bob Lazar's uh, worked on an alien propulsion thing? That would change my. That would. That okay, would yeah, that would change your world, kind of. This would not. Okay, <laughs> there's just so much important shit in out in the world, and I actually really respected this about Alex Jones. Not like I respect Alex Jones all that much, but he was even talking about flat Earth. He's like, "Who the fuck cares about flat Earth? There's important <laughs> shit going on that we need to talk about." I mean, of course, for him, the important shit was like. I don't know, alien space babies or some shit. But <laughs> still. <laughs> he acknowledges that who gives a shit? No one cares. This is what's actually going on. This is the problems that you need to take care of. But these yeah. are the issues at hand that people need to talk about. And honestly, even like, maybe a little less, but even with the student loan stuff, like this is cr crazy. Like this is completely unethical. Not the student loan, but People are, like, putting all their attention on this election. This is what matters. I know. This like, is like stopping concentration. I guarantee you that things are going to be reformed when he gets out. Honestly, even a Republican would be able to reform it. Yeah. It's not this, a is, this is such a basic common sense. Beyond basic, just ethical ethical if obligations. If you believe that these, that these conditions are repulsive, then fuck you. I'm sorry. Go fuck mm -hmm. yourself. Normally, I'm like, okay, I can see the other side. I can't see the other side. Even if you like Trump, you can still like Trump and agree these uh, conditions are deplorable. Mm -hmm. But you have to agree these conditions are fucking deplorable. Yeah, just insane. Like Trump all you want. I can understand. I can totally understand liking Trump. I can totally understand it. But these conditions are fucking deplorable, and you have to admit that. If you don't, you're intellectually dishonest or I don't know. Or your moral compass is somewhere. Or Severely is severely fucked up. It is not okay. <coughs> this is, this is, this is, sorry. <coughs> so first of all, and by the way, I definitely heard this from multiple sources. And even if this wasn't reported by multiple sources, this is the New York Times. And these are quotes from Ninth Circuit federal judges. Okay, so this is this is not bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's craziness. Craziness. Yeah. All right, do we want to end after an hour? What are you thinking, Neil? I don't know. Is there anything else we want to talk about? I mean, we haven't really been on for an hour yet, actually. Um, no, not really in particular. Like 10 minutes we've been on for an hour. The, like, I said, I'm not really anything on Trump, mainly, I don't know, just on other stuff I've been thinking about. But that, that, that could be another episode. Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we talk about the political atmosphere in general while trying to ignore the 2020 presidential candidates? Because I would really like to do an episode just okay. on that. All right. Well, the main thing I've had on my mind recently, I was talking with my mom earlier today, was about the whole Bernie Sanders, and he's like, I want to pay off all the student loans in the entire universe. I mean, you know, America. And I was like, I just cannot, I do not understand that. It seems like such a freaking plea for votes. And honestly, it seems, it just pisses me off too that these like ultra liberal, liberal candidates originally to get in office were like, let's make, I'll make college loans so that everybody in the whole world can go to college and 
you don't even have to be rich. You can just right, go and then pay yourself. This is probably really quick why college shouldn't be free. One, well, one, it's a lot of fucking money. Two, yeah, it's a, and two, it would lower the conditions for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Two, it yeah, it lowers the conditions for everybody else because it just makes all. Co- if we made college free, all it would do, all it would do, is to, is to extend. Is to basically just um, make school eight years longer. That's all it would fucking do. It wouldn't do anything else. It would make school eight years longer, and it would decrease the value of a college degree. The reason everyone can get one. Yeah, the, the thing reason, that makes it, the thing that makes a college degree. One, if everyone can get one, then you're gonna have to get one. Otherwise, you're behind, and that makes it worthless because everyone has one. Then it just extends school by eight fucking years. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's just crazy. It's really crazy. And the whole his whole plan is just retarded. Beyond stupid. It doesn't even add up. It's almost like it almost pisses me off because it's blatant lying. Because he has to <laughs> somehow know that it won't even be close to being able to pay off. <laughs> so how this did, is just like So talk about how he said he was gonna pay off because you told me earlier how he said he was gonna he pay off. He said it was like some amount of percentage tax on um You said zero on, point you said zero point like zero it's Zero point one percent tax, I believe, on all Wall Street transactions. It's just, and then like, but somebody did the math that wasn't even close <laughs> to the amount needed. It, like, there's one point eight or one point two something trillion dollars worth of student loans in America. You need to look that um, up, Neil. Yeah. yeah. There's some headline about it, and like, it's not even close. <laughs> so I just get pissed off at this whole thing where. The whole government there just like, oh, we'll get, we got, um, we'll pay off everybody's student loan. Like, everybody can have student loans. It makes $1.2 trillion as of June 2014. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, a crazy large number. And it just like pisses me off because people are lying. And the first get in office, like, if you vote for me, I'll make it so that everybody can get student loans and literally everybody will uh, be able to have them so everybody will be informed and intelligent from now on and then as soon as everybody knows how fucked up this whole thing is where college is eighty thousand (laughs) dollars like almost a year that's nuts that's absolutely insane because they of course they can just charge it because to most people it in a very odd way it is free it's just something you do right so i mean in the, in the moment, it's free because you have somebody giving you money. You're just like, oh, I'll just pay it back later. So in a lot in a, in a weird sense, it is free. I don't know. It just freaks – it, it creeps me the fuck also, out. Also, let's for a second why the government <clears> – <throat> it's, it's mainly the government's fault that student loans are so fucking expensive, by the way. It is. It's, and, like, the government charges pretty big in- interest rates. They <clears> – they <clears> – <throat> They have to, they, they really don't, it's, and by getting, getting the public sector, having a mixed sector when it comes to loans and um, when having a mixed public private sector when it comes to loans and huge expenses is always a recipe for fucking disaster, aka healthcare and student loans. So here's one thing, um, uh, Jim, a, produce, a producer, he just, he just sent this in the chat, which is a good point. Um, when the banks were bailed out in 08, they got money at 1% interest rate, okay? First of all, which was bullshit. Let the banks burn in hell and die. Fuck those guys. All right, all right. Who the American yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Do you think we should say this for another episode? Or yeah, sure. But, let me, so, but, and the, but the student, but the student, uh, but the students paid the government like 5 to 6% interest rate on their student loans. It's a profit center for the, it's a profit stream for the government, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it, say, honestly, there's clearly a lot to talk about here, and I think I think we should save this not for a student loan video, but for the 2020 presidential candidate video, which I'd like mm-hmm. to. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. So, in conclusion, I think is there anything else about Trump that we can talk about? No, I I just think mainly it's just the fact of how unethical his his, his decision should like have been. The administration has been unethical, I think, and, and that's my main way. It's not from a partisan hack because it's just. Because logic is how, like, my brain works, so he's just logically unethical. It's just like, fuck, I, I don't, like, you're just nothing to me. 
if you're if you're like just if you're not logical in your decisions and also unethical which i think in in very similar way are, are the same thing in a lot of ways i mean i just can't i just can't respect you is that your closing statement yes all right here's my closing statement I'm not going to repeat everything I just said, honestly, because I, I just ran through a lot. But I'll just say this. Um, because of – I'll just say this. I'll, I'll keep it brief and have one point. Um, the one point is is that <clears throat> the Mueller report contains at least enough evidence to have Trump impeached. Again, impeaching just means a trial and the whole tax return thing. Trump has, has had a, at, le- at the very least enough evidence to be impeached. It's a big possibility that he might be arrested when he comes out of office. Mm. It's, I mean, it's becoming a growing possibility. So you know what? But we're just talking about impeachment here. Impeachment is pretty black and white, pretty simple to me. I think he should be impeached simply because, even, again, he doesn't mean he's guilty. He just there's enough evidence for it to see that he is guilty. Or not. I think he already, it's already been proven he's guilty of multiple things. Which means he should have been impeached honestly a few months ago. But I yeah, know, it, it, it's just so interesting that Bill Clinton people freaking flipped when he got a freaking blowjob from somebody. When uh, he when he like he lied about having an affair. Uh, yeah, and and Donald Trump didn't even really lie about not having an affair. Paid her off. Nobody even cares. But he gave a shit about Stormy Daniels. Nobody gives a shit honestly. Like this is way bigger than. It. Bill Clinton getting a blow job and nobody cares. I know <laughs> because he paid her off. <laughs> I know, and I mean, I, I, all right. Before we leave, I said with we, campaign money. Like, I know, fuck. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, hey, it was for the campaign so she didn't for her not talking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, uh, technically. Yeah. I mean, I'm Trump happy. Maybe it overall helped his. Um, yeah, maybe he, he, uh, <laughs> anyways, but, um, yeah, uh, what was I going to say? I, was I, say one more thing. I feel like that was a good way to start off our third season. Yeah, just basically an absolute, like, kind of like, <laughs> mm-hmm. but like yeah, yeah, I mean, to be, to be fair, to be fair, you know, like I said, the truth isn't, the truth isn't bipartisan. And I'm, I'm certainly not a, a hardcore leftist. We were just talking about how Bernie Sanders' policies are stupid. I'm sure you're going to see some of that, some of the, the part of us that don't like the left that much come out when we talk about 2020 presidential candidates and some of the stupid things they're saying. The absolute freaking 10 million liberal candidates there are. I know. Can they all just... All right, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So thank you all for watching. We hope you're interested. If you have any questions, we have, I believe there are like, there's live, there's a live chat. So you always post questions there. We'll try to respond. Um, if you have questions about the whole presidential thing in the next episode, honestly, it doesn't the, your questions don't even have to be on topic to be or, honest. Or even any ideas you guys have for episodes. any ideas, just just you know, ask us anything and we'll answer it. All right. Well, unless you ask my address, Dylan's just you will answer. Okay. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for joining us for the first episode of season three. We're so excited to start this new this new season. And uh, yeah, but, and it's going to be exciting because again, it's, it's going to be, this season might be more political than the other seasons um, <clears throat> because of all the stuff that's going on. So we hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us and it's been a great start to season three. Goodbye. Humanity has been on an epic journey of discovery, learning the truth about the world we live in. New discoveries about the true origins of humanity, ancient history, free energy, as well as the systematic corruption of world governments are now on the forefront of our daily reality. Is the world headed towards destruction based on control and power? Or is an opportunity now being presented to shift and uplift into a higher consciousness? My name is Mel V co-founder and creative director of Conscious Consumer Network, an independent broadcast network that was launched on the 1st of January 2015. Conscious Consumer Network provides full training and an interactive support network for all broadcasters, and we are always looking for inspiring and educational content. Hi, 
Hi, this is Lainey Liberty. And this is Miro Siegel. Conscious Consumer Network has expanded to multiple broadcast locations, increasing our availability and reach across the world, remaining on the cutting edge of independent media. If we wish to create a better world, we must first create better media, geared towards real education instead of indoctrination. You guys really are what changing the world is going to be about, is educating kids at a grassroots level. Dare to seek a better world. Support independent media.